for people that don't know what this is, what are a couple of the top items that you use this for? What, what are you what are you doing with it? It's it's about messing around with those sub gigahertz frequencies. One of the big things I did with it was breaking into my own garage. You know, that's one of those things that, yeah, the Flipper Zero is able to read the frequencies that the garage door opener operates on. What other security bypass areas can it be used for? The primary features of the Flipper Zero are the sub one gigahertz transceiver, right? That's where a lot of that garage door opener parking ramp stuff comes in. Um, the RFID, 125 kilohertz, that's for those proximity tags. Um, NFC, so you know we use NFC for a lot of different things nowadays. Um, it has Bluetooth. It has an infrared transceiver, um, which is something that we haven't quite touched on, but it has the ability to clone and emulate like TV remotes. So you can go somewhere and mess with TVs if you wanted to, or generally anything that operates using infrared. It also has the ability to read and clone iButtons. Um, a lot of people probably haven't heard of iButtons. Those are little coin cell size uh, devices that store a little chunk of data and are usually used, you know, maybe to access a building or they can be used to um, as like a license key for software, like a physical hardware license key. One other thing the Flipper Zero has is U2F. So that's universal second factor. So the Flipper Zero does have the ability to be used as a security key, um, kind of like a Yubi key. Uh, the difference though is that the Flipper Zero is all software based. So they wrote the U2F software, whereas like a YubiKey is hardware based. So um, for the highest level of security, it's not recommended to use the Flipper Zero as a security key, but the ability to do it is there. Wow, I could really see that on an airplane when people are connecting their, their headsets, maybe to their laptop to, to listen to some music or do a little work, that could be a pretty good attack. Absolutely. That would be a great place for it, actually, because there's going to be Bluetooth enabled devices everywhere. And I'm sure with the Flipper Zero, you could reach pretty much every single one on the plane. If there's any level of encryption on it, of course, that's going to need to be cracked. But, you know, I have a feeling that in some cases they're probably not going to be that great. But just on the idea of RFID, so... Uh, one of the, you know, the reason why this was banned off of Amazon is because it was considered a credit card skimmer. And it technically is, right? Because um, credit cards just have the number and the expiration date stored in an RFID chip. You know, the Flipper Zero is one of those devices that takes all of those, you know, different tools that they've been using for so long and just puts them in a compact, easy to use package. It puts some really strong capabilities into people's hands. And I will be interested to see, like maybe there'll be a flipper one someday, like what capabilities will that add? You know, it's very possible that we could see some additional things added to it that make it even more powerful. But it sounds like a lot of that stuff could be added through firmware, no? Absolutely. So work, just working with the hardware that the Flipper Zero already has on it, I mean, your capabilities are pretty much um, unlimited. As far as like working with the frequencies and things, um, the Flipper Zero has the ability to read that stuff and then gives you the ability to do whatever you'd like with it. Like, you know, the, the nice thing about this is it's all one platform, right? That you're interacting with all of these different things. So you're developing apps, you're developing firmware, um, you know, any anything you can do with this. Sorry, 